here we go, here we go, here we go. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Containers from the Couch. We're going to be getting started in just a minute here, so bear with us. Today I've got the light board out. We're going to be talking about container image signing. This marker doesn't work. Let's try it one, one more time. There we go. We are going to be starting any minute here. I've got two guests on today. Um, well, starting off with a bang. I've got two guests on today from AWS. We're going to be talking about container image signing in the context of Amazon EKS with Signer. Getting started here in just a couple minutes. Let's get some background music going. All right, I am just about ready to get started here. Let's go ahead and bring my guests on today. Here we go. Let's make this a bit bigger. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining us today, Jeremy Millen. How are you doing today? Great. Thanks, I. Awesome. Hi, doing good. Awesome. Great to have you guys both on. Uh, again, today, for the folks just tuning in, we're going to be talking about container image signing with Amazon EKS and AWS Signer. Now, something, uh, the way I like to think about container image signing, say you're shopping on Amazon, you buy something, the product itself, kind of relate that to a container image. And when you seal it up, put your stamp of approval on it, make sure it's, it's all Amazon packaged, comes to your house, you can be relatively sure that the package was shipped by Amazon. You can be relatively sure of what's inside of it, you know, by matching it with your order. Uh, and, and you can be confident that that package contains the image or product that you ordered. I, I see container image signing as a similar approach to that, but of course, not with uh, the supply life cycle, but with software supply uh, uh, life cycles. So with that, Jeremy, first, I'd like to introduce you. Of course, uh, our guests don't need uh, any introduction for you. You've been on containers from the couch many times before, but tell us a little bit about what you do at AWS and what you're planning to show us today. Yeah, sure. Thanks, I. So my name is Jeremy Cowan. Uh, I manage developer advocacy for Amazon EKS. And uh, today, as I mentioned, we're going to be featuring container image signing. Uh, I'm specifically going to show how you can use uh, OPA or uh, Open Policy Agent uh, with Ratify to verify the authenticity of uh, image signatures. Awesome. Thank you, Jeremy. And Milland, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what you do at AWS. Sure. Uh, I'm Milland Gokarn. I'm a senior developer at AWS Signer, which is a code signing service. And I'm very excited to talk about container image signing using Notation and AWS Signer. And I'll demo some of the signing use cases and why we need signing. Excellent. All right. So uh, I think first things first, we want to make sure that uh, we understand the context of container image signing. I know that uh, I gave you guys a great analogy, but that's really only scratching the surface of, of the power of uh, container image signing and why it's so important uh, for, for securing your container images uh, all throughout the lifecycle from developing on a local machine all the way to running on an Amazon EKS cluster. Now, Milland, I need your help to go through this, but first I want to lay kind of the groundwork of the components we see here. Um, and actually, before we get into that, Milland, maybe I should ask you first, what is the importance and relevance of container image signing uh, in your own words? Sure, let's talk about that. So, so you can consume container images from a variety of sources. You have base images from public re registries like ECR public, you have your own application images from private registries like ECR or on-premise registries. And you want to ensure whether when you're importing these base images or building on top of them or deploying them to your Kubernetes environments, that they are authentic and uh, they are 
uh, their integrity is maintained, which means they haven't been modified and they are from the source that you expect or the software vendor or author that you expect. So authenticity is what signing provides. Okay, so authenticity, that's kind of the main advantage here when, when working with container image signing. And I know there's quite a few solutions for container image signing out there, uh, but there's something that, that you get as an advantage when working with the flow we're about to demo, right? What's, what's that second advantage, Milan? Yeah, the second advantage we have through AWS Signer is revocation control. What it really means is once you have signed off on an image by signing it, uh, you may have reasons to invalidate that image, a specific image that you signed or the identity itself that was used to sign. And revocation gives you that capability of invalidating signatures, artifacts that you already signed. Exactly. So, you know, with authenticity, we get the idea that we know, at least with the relative confidence, who signed that image, and we know that the contents match what's expected. And then revocation, of course, uh, as Milan explained, by integrating with AWS Signer, giving us the ability to revoke signatures, check that those signatures are still valid or if they've been revoked. And this is especially important in, in the case of things like CVEs or security vulnerabilities. Um, okay. Now that we understand the kind of basics, Milan, I'm going to go back to what I was saying earlier. Let's explain some of the components here. We've got Signer. We've got de a developer on their local machine working with the notation CLI, part of the notary project. It's what helps us actually sign images. And the AWS CLI, because of course, you need to be able to authenticate against AWS to work with the services here like Signer, as well as ECR, which we have here, Elastic Container Registry. Inside, you can see in small text, it says image. Uh, essentially, we're going to assume that we already have a base image hosted in a registry. Now, this could be in a number of different public registries, but in this case, we have it in ECR, but that image is currently unsigned. So we don't have that stamp of approval on it just yet. And lastly, we have our Kubernetes cluster here running on Amazon Elastic Kubernetes Service. We've got a few components in here like Ratify and OPA, Open Policy Agent, which Jeremy's going to tell us a little bit more in depth about in a bit here. But the idea is that we want a running container image in the EKS cluster that has been verified. It's a signed image. Uh, and that's what Ratify and OPA are going to help us do. OK. That was a lot of different terms and components here, but we're going to walk through it step by step here. Now, Milan, I know you've got a demo for us here that's going to show us how we can sign images uh, and how Signer and ECR helps us support that flow. And so first things first, what does the developer over here on their local machine have to do to start this process of signing an image? Sure. Uh, so in this demo, we have an uh, environment with notation that is the CLI tooling for signing images. And it's it implements notary project specifications. Notary project is the open source project for container image signing standard, signature format, et cetera. So you have got notation installed. We'll be doing a few operations through AWS CLI too, as I do the demo. And we provide a installer which installs notation and a plugin for AWS signer. And Notation uses this Signer plugin to communicate with Signer service. OK, so we make it easy to get the kind of prerequisite set up. So I've, I've kind of given that, you know, it's a given here. We've got the Notation AWS CLI locally. Let's also assume that, you know, it's, it's authenticated. The AWS CLI is authenticated to work with Signer. So what's that first step? Uh, so the first step is we'll go to AWS Signer and create a signing profile. And I'll talk about what is a signing profile. So the signing profile is your signing identity. Uh, typically, or uh, what you might be used to with is you may use keys or certificates for signing. Signing profile makes all of that easy. You don't have to manage any keys, any certificate. You create an AWS resource called signing profile. And that is your identity. And behind the scenes, AWS signer will manage the PKI, it will manage certificates and keys. It will also do best practices like key rotation, all abstracted away from you. You don't have to manage any of that. OK, so if you're working you know, with cloud managed keys and you want that heavy lifting, you know, that undifferentiated heavy lift, as we always say, uh, handled for you, you can use something like Signer. Uh, and you mentioned creating a signing profile, which will create and manage the lifecycle of those keys for you. 
OK, that's great. Because I know notation lets you work with you know, private keys and that kind of thing. That's, that's what the project is centered around. It's good to know that, that that signing profile helps streamline some of those steps. OK, now that we have that signing profile created, if you're ready to talk about the next step, yeah. what, how do we actually get a signed image in ECR? Because right now, this image is unsigned. Yes. So, so once we have a signing profile created, it's pretty straightforward with notation. You, you have an image uh, URL, and you would sign it with the notation sign command. And what that does is it communicates with ECR notation. We'll talk to ECR. It will get the digest of the image, and it will sign it. It will generate a signature. The generation of the signature makes use of the plugin, which talks to AWS signer. Signer gives back a signature, and then notation will push that signature to the registry. So one advantage of this is you have your images and signatures all stored in one place, which is your registry. And as you move your images around, there are tools that will help you move your signatures also around. Got it. And if I were to draw out all of the API calls and flows, we would see a lot more arrows here because notation, we first have to create the signing profile. Then we have to get the, the image manifest details from ECR. We ask signer to sign it. It gives us the signature. We push that back to ECR. So it's kind of simplified here. But I think in your demo, we'll see a little bit more. I do want to add one more piece here. So when that signature gets pushed, I think a critical piece to call out here is that that signature actually exists and persists alongside the image in ECR. And this yeah. took a little bit of engineering work where we had to work internally with ECR and Signer. We had to work in the open source community with projects like uh, the Notary v2 project, which serves notation. So a lot of different moving pieces here. But I think it's safe to say that we've kind of simplified the flow here. Milan, is there anything else we want to call out here before we jump into the demo? I think the only the other thing to call out is we're not just talking about like single signatures based on your use case. You can have multiple signatures associated with that image too. Fair enough. So this image can have multiple signatures associated. That makes sense. Uh, and I, I guess what we then need to talk about next is uh, how would you verify those signatures? And what yeah. does it look like if signatures get revoked? And there's a way to do that all locally as well. So. I'm, I'm really eager to get into that part of the demo. Milan, what do you think? Are we ready? Right. So let's, yeah, let's get into the demo now. Awesome. So this is basically, we have also have that in the chat, uh, the installer steps. So there's a bundle installer. We talked about that. What I'm going to do now is going to AWS console. We'll do a bit of operations in the using the console and some through the AWS CLI and notation. Uh, so in signer, we'll create a signing profile. And I'm going to call this Bob. I'm going to select a signing platform. So we are creating this signing profile for the containers platform. It's called Notation for Container Registries. I'm going to use the default settings and just create the profile. So this is it. This creates a, creates a profile. You don't have to deal with keys, certificates, or PKI. Uh, any of that, all of that is managed by AWS Signer. I'm going to copy the profile arm because we're going to use that in a bit. Now let's uh, go in here. Uh, I'll start with the notation plugin list command. So this will show you that the notation is installed, and we have this AWS Signer plugin for notation installed here. Uh, and we can start with signing an image. So for now, Milan, hey, real quickly before you get into that, we do have a question in chat. Not yeah. to mess up your flow here, but uh, Charles asks, why would a signature need or have a validity period? All right, that's a great question. So there are specific use cases. Uh, mostly for advanced use cases where you want to limit the signature by, say, a year. You don't want to use stale artifacts. It's almost similar to like uh, implicit revocation, that you don't want signature to be valid after a particular time. The default validity is pretty high. We have around 11 years of validity on the default signature. But we allow you to customize this and use a lower value if you do have the use case. 
So I don't expect typically it being modified, but if you have advanced use cases, you can use this as an additional control. That's a great question. Yeah, I almost think of it as like an expiry date for container yeah. container images, much like you have an expiry date for like yogurt you buy at the grocery store. Uh, you don't want to consume an image after a particular date because it may no longer be good. All right, awesome. so I'll continue. And uh, what we're going to do now is I have an image already in my ECR private registry. It's a CloudWatch agent that I pulled from uh, ECR public. And what we're going to do is we're going to sign this image. And to sign the image, we are, we are going to, there are two ways you can sign. You can use a tag URL or a digest URL. I'm going to use the uh, digest URL because I want to uh, sign this specific image. So to do that and make uh, things simpler for me, I'm just going to do set an environment variable here and set it to the image URL. And I'm going to use the tag-based URL. So that's it. And we already created a signing profile. I'm going to this was the signing profile we created. So I'm going to use AWS CLI and get signing profile. This is just describing the profile that we created through console. So you can see this. And now I'm going to uh, actually sign it. Actually, before I sign it, I am going to run a notation command that will show that there are no signatures currently associated with it. So notation says, so I'm using the notation inspect this, Im uh, this image, the, it has no associated signatures. Now let's do the signing. So notation sign the image that I want to sign. And I'm going to use my plugin because it knows to use AWS signer for the actual signing operation. And then I'm going to say the ID of the key that I'm going to use is the signing profile arm. So this is the AWS integration in which keys are signing profile. So this is the signing profile we just created, Bob, and I'm going to use to sign it. So we so one thing I just want to call out here, Melinda, is you know we're using two different CLIs here. Of course, the AWS CLI when it comes to working with Signer, and then the Notation CLI, which is an open source project for container image signing, um, and and we're passing in a plugin uh, to, to kind of allow Notation to work with AWS. Yeah. Now, I just have a, a kind of a, a curious question. Yeah. Um, do we have any plans to kind of integrate these flows into into Signer, or is is the plan to kind of work with the open source community, work with Notation? To, to kind of show how um, that project can be used to integrate with AWS. Sure. So, so the core signing and verification workflows are av available through Notation. But all of the other AWS operation with Signer, like if you want to create a profile, manage profiles, and jobs, describe jobs, those are th through AWS. So you, typically, you will use Notation primarily for signing and verification. And the AWS CLI is mostly for setup. So you do one-time setup using either the CLI or console, and then you would use notation for all of the other workflows. Got it. And, and that makes sense as well, because you know the, we're kind of establishing open source standards with how yeah. the images should be signed and stored in registries. So I, I, that makes sense why we see the flow we see today. All right. Uh, so we signed the image. What we're going to do is go back to the console. And uh, let's look at our image. There's a signature being generated alongside the original image. It's stored in the registry, as we called out in the workflow. And what you also see is in AWS Signer, there's a resource called signing job being created. So you can see this. There's a signing job created by signing profile Bob. And this allows you to keep track of these signatures. So you might sign the image, it got stored in the registries, moved around. But in AWS Signer, you have a record of this signature being generated, and you can use it for audit, compliance. 
You can use it for revocation operations later, which we are going to demo. So these are the resources to keep in mind with sign up, the signing profile, which is your equivalent of a key, and the signing job, which is equivalent of tracking a signature. Well, and do you mind making that a little bit bigger just so we can see the different uh, components yes. on this page? Yes. OK, great. So it looks like we have a job for every time that signing is kicked off. And yeah. we didn't actually do anything in the console. We, we kicked off that signing job from the CLI, in fact, from the notation CLI, right? Yes. From the notation CLI, and it used the plugin behind the scenes to talk to AWS signer, got the signing done, uh, which creates a signing job for tracking. And then notation also pushed the signature to ECR. Got it. So that was this. If it was too small to see the last time around, here's the signature, and here's the original image. All right, so we signed the image. Uh, what we're going to do now is I can inspect that. So I can use notation inspect command just to list out the signatures. Here we have a single signature. So you can see notation pulls all of the signatures associated with this image, and it is listing them out. Here we have a single signature. And you can see certain attributes here that we used a signing profile. There's a profile version on in here. And we also have the signing job on uh, inside the metadata. And I'm going to copy the job ID if we're going to demo something related to that later. So now we signed the image. Uh, next step is we want to verify it. So assume this is a different environment. I signed it on my build server uh, or during import process. And now I'm in a different environment, and I want to verify this image. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is notation will not trust any image by default. You have to explicitly configure notation to say which identities you trust. So by default, nothing is trusted. You have to explicitly configure it. And by the way, that's actually good practice for, for Kubernetes as well, right? Uh, and Jeremy, maybe a question for you. Uh, in general, you don't want to just have your cluster trust any old container image. You should, ideally, uh, have a set of trusted sources to pull from, right? That's right. Yeah. So typically, you know, you'll, you'll trust images from internal sources, uh, like private registries. Um, but even there, even there, you may want to uh, sign the, those those images um, as another layer of protection uh, and control. Um, and with, with public images, um, you know, ideally, all public images will be signed uh, by the uh, entity that, that uh, created the image. But uh, it's, um, it's it's not that commonplace uh, these days. Um, so what a lot of folks will do is they'll um, bring those containers in-house. Um, like they may uh, pull images from a public registry and push them to their uh, private registry um, where they can be signed by the enterprise uh, key, in this instance, uh, AWS signing profile. Makes sense. Something like a CIO team generally has a vetted set of, you know, for example, base images to pull from. So you don't have rogue development teams going off and developing a application on, you know, let's say, um, an uh, incompatible base image or one that hasn't been approved by, you know, that central uh, CIO team. But right. okay. uh, right. now that we understand uh, kind of the importance of making sure we trust the sources of container images, Milan, how do we configure that at least through notation locally? Sure. So notation has these trust policies, and uh, we designed this from scratch for container-specific use cases, and I'll talk a little bit about it. This is a sample policy which we'll use to verify this image. So you have a trust policy where we are saying for this particular registry scope, which is just a prefix, a registry namespace prefix. So for these images, uh, verify the image. There are different verification levels. We're going to use strict, which will do all of the verification checks using, including revocation check. And then this trust store is AWS signers trust store. This is a reference to the root certificate. And the important piece is this trusted identities. So this calls out the specific signing profile that you trust 
to sign this image. And we will uh, we will push this using, so I'm gonna use notation policy import. And this is a local file in the directory. Uh, and we imported that policy. And now we can say, so what this import did this, push this as the notations policy, which means we now trust Bob to sign images, but not any image, only images which have these prefix. And this is very customizable. You can set registry scopes to be wildcard star, or you can have a set of, this is an array, you can set a bunch of different registry scopes if they're all gonna be signed by the same identity or profile. Okay, so how do we verify? We use the notation verify command and pass the image reference. And this time we don't have to pass in a plugin or anything like that, Miland. It's, it's able to automatically like, yeah, instance. it'll use the plugin automatically. For signing, you could have multiple plugins. You use, there's, there's ways to simplify that too. Notation has some commands where if you're gonna use a key very frequently, you can use the notation key command to assign a name to a plugin so that you don't have to specify the plugin every time on the command line. That makes sense. Uh, so here we verified the signature. So a bunch of things happening in the background. We can, do you wanna get the light board up? We can- Yeah, let's do it. Do All right, there so we so we configured notation with a trust policy to begin right. with. And then we said notation verify image reference. What that does is notation now talks to ECR and tells it, give me all the signatures associated with this image. And it'll pull all the signatures and it'll start, it'll verify the signatures and it'll check whether those signatures were generated by the identity, uh, Bob in this case. Plus it'll call AWS signer to do a revocation check. There's a revocation check API, API and it'll call, call that. So you got signature verification, including revocation check. And then once all of those are passed, it'll say uh, this signature is good. And then you can deploy that image and you can use it. Uh, Milan, quick question. What about for air gapped environments where maybe we can't go to signer to check the revocation policy? Yeah, so, is it possible? Yeah, so, there's, so this is highly customizable. So if we get, get back to my screen, um, All right, so here in the notation uh, documentation here, you can use a permissive policy, which will do a revocation check, but it will only log it. Uh, and there are other values like audit and skip. So what we designed this for is you can scope it to this specific image I want to, is signed by a particular identity if there are certain images that are not signed, maybe you're migrating to using signed images. You can set exceptions for some images. Uh, you can set different policy levels for different set of images. So we have all the support of, you want to do incremental adoption of signing and you have some images which are signed, not signed, all of those scenarios are supported through this policy. Got it, that makes sense. Okay, uh, one thing I did wanna call out, if you can pull up that trust policy again. So we yeah. saw how we can verify images when we're uh, doing the notation checks locally, but you know, we're containers on the couch here. We talk about uh, uh, Amazon EKS and ECS, but today our focus is on Amazon EKS and we wanna see how that verification can be done in the software supply chain when working with deploying images into a Kubernetes cluster. Um, and so I do want to call out that, that trust policy that you're sharing right now, it's yeah. going to be very similar to what uh, Jeremy shows us later with Ratify. And I think an alternative solution to that is something like Caverno, where we create a policy that can you know, validate or deny a particular image. Uh, Milan, I, I do want to check with you. Did you have anything else you wanted to demo in that first portion of this kind of lightboard flow we went through? No, this is good. We can, we can talk about the Kubernetes integration. Okay, let's do it. 
All right, so we covered, let's say, the first half of this. Now, Jeremy, I'm going to pick on you to help me explain the second half here. So we've got the image in ECR. It's signed. Uh, and now we need to build some sort of workflow where, let's say, a user with their local CLI, maybe they have some Kubernetes manifest YAML, maybe they're just running some deploy commands. They want to deploy uh, an application into EKS. Now, this could also be like a CI CD pipeline that they're using to deploy these. But we, what we want to do is we want to automate that verification step so that when they push their deployment, their pods that are made up of container images into their cluster, that it does that same verification flow that we saw Millen uh, show locally with notation. So Jeremy, what's that first step? Well, I think I covered the first step. Okay, so there's the CI CD pipeline pushing some sort of deployment. What's the second step? Yeah, sure. So the second step would be to run a dynamic emission controller in your cluster like OPA Gatekeeper um, or Caverno. Uh, those are going to verify that um, the objects that are being instantiated within the cluster um, adhere to a, a policy that you configure. Now, uh, OPA Gatekeeper um, is not able to directly call Signer. Um, it does have the ability to call external services, uh, which is the role that Ratify plays here. Um, and so what will happen is when that, uh, when, when that uh, deployment um, gets instantiated on the cluster or when an attempt to instantiate that object occurs, um, OPA will call Ratify, um, and Ratify um, will use the notary APIs to verify the image signature. Um, the result from uh, that call to AWS Signer will be returned to uh, OPA, uh, and OPA will uh, determine whether to admit or to reject um, the the object in, in this particular instance the uh, the deployment. Okay, so there's a couple of things that we covered there, more than a couple of things maybe. So uh, we deploy the uh, application, the pod itself. Uh, the, the dynamic admission controller here, OPA, uh, is going to be able to work with Ratify, which is going to you know pull details about the image from ECR. It's going to pull things like the revocation checks from Signer to make sure the the certificates. Uh, signatures are still valid. Uh, it, it then is going to, you know, using those notation APIs, validate that, tell OPA, uh, and OPA either denies it, because that's kind of the gatekeeper here. At the end of the day, it's the dynamic right. admission controller. Shouldn't say gatekeeper. That's that's another uh, solution. So it, it's that dynamic admission controller there. So it will deny it or uh, verify it. Okay. Right. I, right. So we are we are actually using OPA gatekeeper, um, not not uh, o o plain OPA. Uh, right. It's OPA Gatekeeper that is running within your, your cluster. Again, it doesn't have to be OPA Gatekeeper. Um, it could be uh, Caverno or a homegrown uh, solution, um, so long as you know it makes the appropriate calls to verify the image signature. That's right. That's right. That's my mistake. OK, so uh, now that we kind of have that general flow here, anything else we want to cover here before we get into the demo of how we actually do this in Amazon EKS? Uh, no, I, I don't. I don't think so. Let's do it. A uh, quick thing I want to call out is with Signer, mm -hmm. you can sign in one region. So your signing profile is created in one region. You sign an image, push it to ECR, and if you are deploying to multiple regions, you don't have to do anything different. You, with Signer, you sign in one region. You can verify in all of, all of the AWS regions. Oh, okay. So maybe I'll just write here. It's kind of global. Uh, at least with, with the way the signatures work. Yeah, with, with the way verification works, yeah. Verification, got it. So you sign in one region, but you can verify in any, any, any region. OK. Yep. Got it. All right, Jeremy, uh, okay. let me get your screen back up here. There we go. Yeah. Uh, is the text big enough? Uh, you might want to go a little bigger, but uh, yeah, it's, it's looking good. Yeah. OK. All right. So um, I, I have an image that I've already signed. I've uh, run through the steps that uh, Millen covered earlier. Um, I'll show you that now. So if I do notation LS, um, whoops. Uh, you'll see that this, uh, this image has a signature. Um, 
And uh, as Milan showed earlier, uh, I hey Jeremy, I lied. Could you make it a little bit bigger for us? <laughs> yes. Uh, how's that? That's that's a whole lot better. Okay. Um, so I can run notation, inspect, and get additional information about uh, the image signature, such as the signing profile that was used to sign the image and the uh, signing job that's associated um, with uh, the signature. And I'm going to use that later uh, when I uh, revoke the certificate. But for now, you can see that um, I have an image uh, that has been signed by AWS Signer. And so um, now I'm going to uh, deploy that image into my uh, cluster. I already have OPI Gatekeeper and Ratify running within my cluster. I've configured it um, such that it's going to uh, admit, uh, admit images that have been signed by AWS Signer with a particular uh, signing profile. Um, so now let me clear the screen. So now I'm going to uh, create a deployment, create a CTO. Okay, so I'm going to create this deployment called Signed um, using an image um, that I've signed with AWS Signer. And as expected, uh, the, the deployment uh, was uh, admitted, and I can get details on that deployment. Uh, get that. Uh, And okay, so I, I guess that one out of one means that deployment is made up of one pod. That's right. Uh, it looks like it's started and available. That, that's right. All right. So you can see that uh, the um, the container has uh, has started and it's it's running. Okay. Uh, so that's a happy yeah. flow for when yeah. we have a signed image and we have it all set up. So OPA says, "Good job. It's signed and verified." That's right. So now I'm, I'm going to do a similar thing, but with an unsigned uh, image. So I'm going to run kubectl, um, create deployment. Oops. Um, and here I'm using uh, uh, the, the pause uh, container from the uh, ECR public registry. Um, and when I run this, um, you'll see uh, oh, let me try that again. Mm, hold on. Oh, that's strange. Um, hmm, of course, uh, this wouldn't be a demo if things didn't go awry. Uh, let me see. Uh, what could be the issue here? Hold on. Let me let me try something to get this working again. Bear with me. We we love to see some live debugging here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Jeremy. While you're working through that, yeah. one thing that I just want to call out for our viewers at home. Uh, one of the things that we say at Amazon all the time is that good intentions don't tend to work. You need good mechanisms. So when we see a flow like this, where we're using EKS with tools like OPA Gatekeeper and Ratify uh, to validate the images, what we're saying is that you know while we trust our developers to have good intentions and not deploy any images that are unacceptable or uh, have, in, have any CVEs or, or not vetted by the internal team, we validate and verify that in the automation. And so this is something that an operations team would set up uh, with like Ratify and OPA so that the developer never really needs to know that it's happening. In fact, they do their standard pipeline, their standard workflows, they push to Git, you know, they've got GitOps set up. Uh, they can be sure that the cluster is gonna validate you know, with the mechanisms that the image is signed and secure and verified. Again, the idea here is to not rely on good intentions, but rather on good mechanisms. Uh, Jeremy, how's it, how's it going over here? Well, let me see. Mm. 
Uh, not too good, as you can see. Uh, let me try one last thing here. Uh, hold on. So if I had to uh, guess what might be going on here, I have a feeling that it's that notation piece uh, that's part of Ratify that's failing to connect to Signer. Um, at, at least it, it it looks like it's either that or that Signer can't even, or sorry, not Signer, but um, that, that OPA can't even talk to Ratify. Uh, that's, that's right, yeah. So uh, there we go. OK. Um, so there was an issue with the uh, Ratify uh, container or Ratify service. So I restarted it, and um, it does appear to be working now. So you would think. Because I'm deploying uh, an image that's unsigned, uh, I should get uh, an error message saying that the uh, deployment was refused. Um, this is um, uh, this is because of the way that OPA is currently configured. Um, it is uh, it is rejecting pods, uh, not deployments. So if um, if I describe the deployment, let's see if y'all describe. Uh, and I change this to unsigned. Um, you'll see that the create failed for the pod. Uh, that's part of this deployment. Um, and in fact, if I uh, get pods, get uh, yeah, pods, change that to unsigned. Um, there, there are no uh, pods found with that label because um, they were rejected by OPA. Um, the deployment uh, was able to be instantiated within the cluster, but none of the pods that were part of that deployment um, were, uh, were created. Now, I'll, I'll show you another way that you can uh, see this working. So I'm going to, um, I I'm going to use the kubectl run command to create uh, a, a naked pod that is a, like a pod with, without a deployment. Um, and here we'll actually get an error uh, from uh, OPA gatekeeper saying that um, the pod or the, um, the pod was rejected because it doesn't conform to the policy. You see, and so here it says it denied the request. Uh, signature verification failed for all signatures. And that's because this image um, was, was not signed. That makes sense. Now, now, Jeremy, we, we talked earlier about how there was multiple levels of trust associated with at least verifying notation locally. And you can imagine that for some of our viewers watching, they're saying, look, maybe in a dev environment, even if the image isn't signed, just let it go through. And we even have a comment in the chat here from, from Charles. Charles, uh, again, um, I can hear the dev tears from no longer being able to start a busy box. Well, let's be honest. You probably don't want such a, a strict policy for dev environments. So you want devs to be able to deploy pods that are maybe unsigned and, and then maybe start using more strict policies and staging tests and prod environments. So Jeremy, can you talk a little bit about how that can be customized? Yeah, yeah. So as, as Milan showed you earlier, um, you can configure those, those settings and exceptions within your trust policy. and. Um, Ratify has a similar uh, configuration file um, that you, you create when you use it uh, with OPA. And so here um, is an example of that, uh, that, that trust policy for Ratify. And you'll see it, it mirrors the, the trust policy um, that Millen was using for notation, right? So here you can specify the registry scopes. Um, the level of signature verification. I currently have it set it to strict, but you could also set it to permissive um, or to uh, to audit. Um, and you could also specify you know, the trusted identities or the signing profiles um, that uh, ratify trust. So all of the settings that were available as part of the uh, the trust policy are available here with ratify. Got it. Got it. OK, so that makes sense. We, we kind of see that one-to-one -one connection. Now, Jeremy, I have one uh, other kind of pointed question for you here. Now, let's say that um, you know a log4.js level vulnerability has come out in one of our images that we publish. And we want to say, 
this image is no longer secure to use. Revoke it, revoke it. No one else should ever try to deploy this image. What can we do? Yep, yep. So that's a great question. Um, so that's an instance where you might want to um, revoke the signature. And so you know, earlier um, we ran um, a notation inspect, uh, and we were able to see uh, the the job that um, was used to sign this this image. And so what I could do is I could use that um, that ARN or that ID um, to revoke the image signature. Now uh, I will uh, switch to my browser here. Is this uh, big enough, or do I, do I need to make it a little bigger? Would be good. Maybe fill the screen as well would be good. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to come over here to uh, signing jobs. And uh, I just I happen to know that this is the, the job that was uh, associated with the image signature for the image. Um, I'm going to click into it and uh, revoke the signature. Uh, and then I'll do revoke. the signature. Um, and now, if I do a kubectl pods sign. Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to kill or delete uh, this uh, pod. And because it's part of a deployment, it's going to automatically restart. Um, so, so Jeremy, yeah. while you do that, actually, there, there's a question here that's exactly what you're about to show. So uh, I take it in that example. So with that log4j example, uh, or what you're doing right here, all running pods would need to be torn down as well. Uh, th that's a good question, because because Kubernetes isn't going to do that automatically for you, even if the signature has been revoked, right? Uh, th that, that's right. And um, th this works together with OPA. Uh, or open policy agent, which is a dynamic admission controller. Um, and so it only acts um, when uh, a, a, an object is instantiated uh, or an API, a Kubernetes API is, is called. Um, I, I believe o OPA um, has a mode where it could um, scan through objects within the cluster, but in a typical configuration, um, it acts on uh, API calls before that API call is admitted, um, it uh, does a, a verification or a mutation of the request. Right. I can so, uh, and, that a bit. So that, that, that's a great question. So in terms of what, so depending upon your application, you have a trade-off between your application's availability and your security posture. So here in this example, you got log4j. You will. You may not immediately shut down all your workloads. You would probably roll forward with a version that is secure, but you don't want any more deployments of an insecure version. But we have the building blocks that allows you to build capabilities like that. So notation, CLI, there's also a notation library which provides the same set of functionality, a Golang library, and you can integrate it with Kubernetes feature sets to have something that scans and can give you an option to either like warn or log or tear down based on your preferences. That, that, that's right. question. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's right, Milan. So um, you wouldn't necessarily want to uh, revoke a signature without uh, creating a replacement image uh, that has been patched uh, because um, uh, your, your application uh, if you revoke the, the signature, uh, may not be able to scale, um, uh, yeah. which, could, which could cause an availability uh, issue. Yeah. As, as the, the other way is to, like, you can you can run things in permissive mode if you don't want their availability to be impacted by revocation. That's right. Yeah, that, that is another way to achieve it. That's right. Um, so what, what I'm going to do now, I'll delete um, pod. And I will do this. Okay, so now we're deleting that pod which was deployed with a container image whose signature was good but was now revoked. 
That's right. That's right. Um, so in a moment or two, uh, we'll get confirmation that the pod has been deleted. And then we'll take a look at the deployment. I am surprised to see that a delete operation is, is taking some time here. But of course, this is this is how live demos always go, folks. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. So and we deleted it, but we didn't have to recreate it because the deployment is always healing. You know, the replica set will always bring up uh, faulty or broken pods. That's right. So um, we can see that one one pod is desired, but one is unavailable, uh, and then you'll see that uh, it failed to create. Okay. So as expected, with the signature being revoked, the OPA gatekeeper, along with Ratify. Uh, you know, it calls the AWS signer API to see if the signature is still valid. Signer, of course, responding with no, it's been revoked. Um, so what we saw here is Jeremy wearing two different hats, one of the image publisher who is revoking signature and one of the app application operator who's deploying an, uh, an application based on that container image. That's right. And just to uh, reiterate what Milan was showing before, um, you can see the different um, the different uh, signature verification levels that you can configure, um, and you can also uh, use these with exceptions. So you can have a strict policy, but then you can have uh, a, a list of uh, exceptions. Yeah, like for example, if you have your application signed, but say a sidecar wasn't signed yet, you can put an exception on that sidecar, but check the application image with a strict policy. Oh, that, that, that makes a lot of sense. Of course, deployments can be made up of multiple container images. So yeah, that's, that's good that there's multiple levels of uh, configuration there. And of course, very similar to what we saw with using notation to verify locally. Yeah. Um, OK, so just, just curious, if someone didn't want to use EKS and admission controllers to verify, validate images, and all of that, uh, Milan, could could someone feasibly, you know, uh, offload that verification into maybe like a CI/CD pipeline instead of doing it in Kubernetes? Yeah, you can based on your CI/CD workflow and what checks you want to implement. You can repeat these earlier in your software supply chain lifecycle as well. So ideally, like an ideal workflow would be. A public image is signed, and when you import it, you want to check the signature, you want to do your license check, CV, and then you put a new signature on it at import time. And then you, at build time, so you installed some new stuff using Docker, uh, Docker file. At before build, you want to check that your source image was signed by your team, and it can be a valid base image and then you pass it on to deployment. So this can be the same workflow can be applied at each step of your software supply chain or your CI CD process. Right, so we kind of glossed over that CI CD software supply chain piece right, right yeah, here. And said, focused on deployment. Yeah, when we deploy straight into EKS. But feasibly, you could have done that verification of the image over here and then uh, let, let you know, then you don't have to deploy Ratify and open have it in EKS. But the reason we showed this flow, again, comes back to those having good mechanisms and automation here, uh, allow Kubernetes to kind of be that, that control plane uh, for your deployments as well. Yeah. So I think the idea here is lots of different ways you could implement this. I think the flow we see here is going to be one of the, the more common approaches uh, and, and one of the best practices. Now, before we close out for the episode today, uh, Milan, I want to give you an opportunity to uh, say anything else you want to talk about here, um, and yes. as well as for the viewers at home, how maybe they can get involved uh, with the open source project, with Signer, and keep up to date with the latest updates we'll be rolling out. Yeah, so I quickly wanted to touch upon revocation, which Jeremy demoed, on the flexibility that AWS Signer provides. So typically, if you're using keys or PKI certificates, et cetera, you can only revoke the keys, not individual signatures. Uh, signer provides you the flexibility of revoking both. You can revoke a signing profile. Like you want to say, I don't no longer trust Bob to generate signatures. You can revoke Bob, but you can also revoke individual signatures. 
So if you don't want a huge blast radius, you want to do targeted revocation, that flexibility is present. I think the key takeaway I want folks to take away is that why signing is important, how to incorporate it in your application flows and how AWS signer and notation makes it really easy for you to adopt this. Awesome. And I just dropped a link in the chat as well, which shows uh, a flow very similar to the demo that uh, Jeremy and Millen shows, uh, showed us today. You can follow along that blog to learn more about container image signing with AWS Signer and Amazon EKS and see the hands-on steps with the notation CLI, creating the signing profile, uh, deploying that image into ECR, uh, and kind of some of the steps that we saw here as well. So be sure to check out that blog to learn more. Uh, Jeremy, any, any other closing statements that you want to share with our viewers today? Uh, no, not, uh, not uh, other than to try uh, AWS Signer uh, with notation. Um, give it a try and let us know what you think. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, go ahead. In, yeah, in terms of participating, the, uh, the Notary project is an open source project. Everybody is welcome to contribute to it. We welcome comments on uh, your experiences with adoption and uh, new feature requests, et cetera. So yeah, every, everybody's welcome to uh, check that out. Notaryproject.dev is the document site and uh, GitHub Notary Project is where you'll, you'll find us. Well, with that, I want to thank my guests, Mill and Jeremy, for the awesome demo and overview that we saw here today. Thank you so much. For our viewers at home, thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, any feedback here at AWS, we, we listen to our customers, our users. We build things that our customers are asking for. And so your feedback is invaluable. So whether it's a comment on this YouTube video or LinkedIn post, whether it's going to GitHub, getting involved with the open source project, or just you know, finding us on Twitter and sending us a message. We're happy to get feedback. Be sure to subscribe to Containers from the Couch. Let us know if you like this video and you want to see more like this in the future. Uh, you can always follow along on the channel. Thanks for joining, and we'll catch you next time.